Hey, Manufacturing World, welcome to another episode of Shop Matters, sponsored by Akuma America Corporation. I'm your host, Wade Anderson. We are coming to you live once again from IMTS 2022, day four of the show. It has been a phenomenal show. We have been busy the entire time. It's been incredible, and it's great. One of the best things about the show, I always say it's like coming to a family re- family reunion. You get to see all the people that you've known for years in one spot, so um, I'm very excited to have joining me here today, Dan and Angela Olson from Mock Machine. Welcome. Thanks, Wade. We're, yeah. Thanks, Wade. Really Great to be, here. to be here. Dan, why don't you take just a minute, introduce you and Angela, and tell us a little bit about your company. Yeah, so uh, I'm the president of Mock Machine. Uh, we founded our company 12 years ago, and uh, we started off, uh, had no experience in manufacturing, uh, background in engineering. Okay. And uh, but we, we had a uh, need for producing parts for our other business, um, parts that we were unable to purchase through our existing distribution channel, okay. and uh, was unable to convince them to manufacture those parts. So we had uh, set up a small shop. Necessity is the mother of invention, That's, right? You got it. We set up a small shop um, with a uh, laptop computer, a folding table, and an antiquated CNC machine. No kidding. And no experience in manufacturing and went for it. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So, so, so what, what is that company that, uh, I want you to explain it and then sure, I'm going to sure. share a personal story once you get done, but what's the other company that you're involved with? So our other business is called boatsinks.com. Okay. And we are an online supplier of sacrificial anodes to the marine industry primarily. And, uh, some of the products that we were unable to get were for certain types of propellers um, that are used you know, on sailboats and things like that. Yeah. Uh, only source for those parts were uh, the OEMs. Hmm. And everyone, you know, in the boating industry knows when you have to go to the OEM, you're paying for it, you know, handily. Yeah. So we started doing some die casting. We, okay. or we designed some tooling, started doing some die casting in the driveway. Okay. Started manufacturing these parts, and uh, uh, the first product that we had released to the, you know our our market um, resulted in about four hundred of these units sold in the very first year. No kidding. And that's, that's when incredible. we kind of that's when we kind of realized, you know, hey, we might be onto something. You know, being first to market as an aftermarket supplier to these parts for the marine industry. So we started uh, designing and building more and more diecast tooling. And uh, producing more, you know, various parts for uh, for that business. Okay. And uh, as the word kind of got out that we had some manufacturing, you know, capability, I had friends that were mechanical engineers. They started coming to us and uh, saying, hey, can you make me this part? Yeah. And uh, some of my very first customers that I had were all in the aerospace industry. No kidding. So we went from zero to aerospace. Zero <laughs> to aerospace. I like that term. And uh, that's when we started to realize that we actually uh, might have something here. Okay. Um, with regards to custom manufactured components. Yeah. So so I got to share uh, what I think is kind of a, a funny story or cute story. The last time I was at your shop, you were sharing the boat zinc story with me. And I didn't know that part. All I've ever known you guys as is mock machine. And I know the aerospace side of your company and the business. And you were, uh, Angel, I think you were the one sharing with me that you guys do a lot of business with the Coast Guard. And my son's in the Coast Guard. So I called him up and I said, hey, um, a customer of ours says that they deal with an MK1. They, they do a lot of business with the Coast Guard with boat zincs. Do you ever deal with anodes? And he said, uh, yeah, I install them almost every week. So Recently, uh, uh, over Labor Day weekend, I got to go up to my son's uh, station. He's up in Port Angeles, Washington. When I went up there, he took me to a tour of his station there. And the first thing he did is walk me over to one of their 25-foot boats that was on a trailer and pointed out the new boat zinks that was on the the Coast Guard boats there. So I thought that was pretty cool. Your products were right there on display, shiny and new on them. Nice, shiny and new. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. All right. So... Tell me a little bit about the the transition. Um, you guys have an amazing shop, and it's it's a story that I've heard repeated a couple of times. Only you guys really kicked it up a notch. Yep. Um, as I talked to to John Saunders here a little bit ago, um, actually yesterday we had an interview with him, and then I had a gentleman here from Squid Industries 
he had a similar experience where they go from vertical machining uh, for vertical machining centers to horizontal machining centers. You went from vertical machining centers to horizontal machining centers, but you went from verticals to horizontals on steroids, right? That's right. That's so, right. So tell me what that process looked like. So our primary business is all repeat production work. We, okay. we really were focusing on volume production, uh, working with uh, OEMs that built products that had long life cycles that they needed, you know, monthly or, or weekly deliveries of components. Um, and so we were doing all this work in verticals and, you know, we're always, we're looking to optimize the process, become more efficient, utilizing, you know, three plus one uh, machine uh, techniques. But at the end of the day, we were constantly fighting with the fact that the spindle would stop, the operator would have to open the doors, change out the part. Right. And as our customers' volumes kept going up, it started to get to a point where we were running out of creative and innovative ideas on how to get more throughput without continuing to add more and more vertical spindles. Sure. Um, and so I started exploring horizontal machining centers and we reached out to our sales guy and uh, he, uh, he said, yeah, you know, we, we might have something here that might be of interest to you. Okay. And so we went down to Charlotte and uh, looked at a, uh, a Kuma MB5000. And uh, he said, this one comes with the Fastum system. Uh-uh. And I go, well, I was kind of thinking about getting my feet wet. I didn't realize I was going to dive into the pool. Yeah. <laughs> straight uh, into the deep end. Straight in the deep end. And uh, so after that trip, I came back and uh, Angela and I were talking. And I said, you know, we have a, a lot of part numbers that we could be running in this system. Yeah. And uh, I think this might be the right the right move for us. Yeah. And uh, so we we brought in that machine and right away started designing building tombstones no and, and get and getting that system up and running. Okay. And after we had the first few part numbers in you know in full swing in that that system, um, we found ourselves to be incredibly productive. Yeah. And the our throughput went up an order of magnitude, hmm. and we were able to do that without having to add significantly more staff, or or have you know additional expenses, is you know adding more and more you know, say vertical machining centers. Okay. And so once we started that going down that route, we just we never looked back. Right. Um, it was an enormous step to to, to take. Um, it took a lot of commitment. Mm-hmm. Um, from an engineering standpoint and, yeah. and um, a machining standpoint. But once you get the setups in place, you get everything proven out, uh, the consistency and the repeatability was second to none. So, Angela, was that initial investment, was there a lot of justification going into it, a lot of calculations, or was it really just a leap of faith? I hate to say, but nothing is a leap of faith. It's all planned and everything's calculated, isn't it? Right. Uh, I would like to call the fast sums and the horizontal uh, kind of the the picture, the pitcher, not the player. I mean, the player of, in a baseball. He the machine and the system is like the first part. He throw the machine throws the ball, and all these new parts come out, and it's just an awesome um, experience to see how it runs our shop. I mean, it's that's the first thing. Okay. It's gets started, it runs everything, it runs into the night, yeah. and it just can't have more of it. I mean. We have to get another building and find uh, more space for this. Right. Yeah. It's it's definitely become the heart of our operation. Okay. Um, we, we have some of our suppliers, material suppliers that have come to us and say, you know, I can't believe how much material you process in no. your facility. I mean, our, our facility is not small, but it, the amount of aluminum that we go through and a lot of the stainless steel that we do go through, um, is just, it's unprecedented and it would not have been possible without this type of a system in place. Now, do you run stainless and aluminum all in the same system? So we, we do, we'll have a dedicated machine for stainless steel. We'll have a dedicated machine for aluminum, okay. um, just to keep things, you know, segregated and whatnot. Yeah. But, um, they all run through the same fast mm -hmm. system. They're all in the same container system, same load stations. Yeah. Same so, spindle types between the horizontals. Same spindle types. Okay. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Very good. So, how many horizontals and 
pallets now in the FASM systems are you up to? So it's two MB5000s okay. on a 24 pallet system. Okay. Very good. Yeah. And then new for this year, you've got a new baby coming, right? We got a new one coming. All Can't right. wait. So, so talk about that a little bit. So it's the uh, new generation MB5000. Okay. And that's paired to a uh, Fastum's 18 pallet pool. Yeah. And uh, we, right. we look forward this is to where it. I wish I had a video camera because I can see it through, my, uh, right through my view right yep. here. So yeah, yep. you bought the MB5000 with the FPT right here on the floor. That's right. That's right. That's and, incredible. Uh, uh, that machine, we're going to start putting into that uh, as soon as it hits our floor, focusing on just nighttime production with that. And we're going to utilize it a lot during the daytime for setting up new new part numbers okay. and getting them going. Um, and then once about four o'clock hits, we're going to let the automation take over and let it run all through the night. Okay. So, so what do you see as the benefit of the pallet pool versus the container type system? Uh, we went with this style primarily because it had a uh, smaller footprint. Okay. Um, we were looking at other FASTMs options, uh, FMS1, mm -hmm. uh, which was appealing to us, but we just didn't have the ceiling height mm. to achieve three levels. Okay. And so this one, because uh, it, it, we're able to have 18 pallets and a smaller footprint, uh, was really appealing to us. Right. Um, it, it's also appealing how it's all one unit. Yeah. It's, a, it's similar to the containers mm -hmm. where they come in as one piece. Um, and so it's it's very well packaged. It's it's a nice robust setup. Yeah. Um, and it looks really good. Yeah. It, it does <laughs> and, look and great. To be honest yeah. with you, you know the the look of, of the equipment in our shop has been a huge marketing and promotional tool when we bring customers in and they see uh, you know our nice beautiful Kuma machines. Yeah. Um, they're in awe by it. Right. And it gives them a lot of confidence that yeah. you know. We have, you know, nice high-end equipment and that they can have the confidence that their parts are going to be made and made well. Right. Using the highest level of technology. Absolutely. Right. You hit a, a really interesting point that I think, um, especially when you're looking at automation, the ceiling height, that's a really unique point. And this is a conversation we get into a lot of times between when you're looking at robot automation versus gantry automation. Um, you look at the height of that robot system on that mill. And then very quickly look at the robot or the gantry arm on that lathe. It takes some ceiling height to be able to handle the gantry arms coming up and down. There's times people overlook some very simplistic things like that. So it that's does. a that's it a does. very unique thing that you yep. brought up. Yep, absolutely. Like I said, everything's calculated. Yeah, yeah, everything's <laughs> calculated. Now, what other automation do you have? You have a gantry lathe, don't you? We do. We have an LB three thousand with okay. uh, an OGL ten. Okay. Um, machines an absolute workhorse. Yeah. Um, that, that automation has enabled us to actually move jobs that we were running in our mills, hmm. putting them into the LB, doing full mill turn parts. Cycle time might be a little bit longer, but with the automation, we're able to actually produce significantly more parts throughout the day, uh, than in milling machines. Oh, no kidding. So wow. it, it actually, it, it was a, a different type of, a, a perspective that we've had to take at looking yeah. at it instead of. Um, a part that would say take you know five minutes in our, our, our milling machine mm -hmm. or a horizontal to make, it took us six minutes in the LB3000. But if we're able to make 300 and 350 of them throughout the whole 24 hour period of time, right? Um, it, it made a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, the consistency of that machine is absolutely incredible. Um, parts from morning through night, all measure identical. Yeah. Um, and it's, it does a fantastic job. The thermal stability on those machines is very phenomenal. stable. Second to none. Very stable. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. All right. So what's on the horizon for mock machine as you move into next year? So we're in the process of building uh, an addition on, on our facility, okay. adding another 14,000 square feet. Nice. Um, once we get that completed, um, we're going to be looking at bringing on a, a 2SP 2500. Okay. Um, Cause a lot of our volume, production that we've been doing um can be cycle times can be reduced further okay by using that type of technology yeah um so that's kind of like where we're, where we're looking at all right so, so uh just to kind of wrap up real quick i understand you got a, a little award i got to uh see that as a little sneak peek as you walked up that's Tell right us a little bit about the award that you got so we were just uh we were just given an award by uh, Blazer Coolant. Okay. Uh, 
for uh, productivity and innovation yeah. and, and manufacturing. And uh, they've actually become a, a really, really uh, invaluable um, partner to us. Okay. Um, we've, we've found huge improvements in, in tool life mm-hmm. um, and surface finish um, and overall um, cleanliness of our machines okay. and, and of the parts from the coolant that we've been using. Nice. Uh, from them, so they just presented this to us uh, at a little lunch and uh, right before uh, we came here. Yeah, very nice. Well, so, congratulations. Thank you. So, thank you. Well, we thank you for the partnership. We thank you for the the partnership that we've had as a as a customer relationship, and really thank you for the time that you've taken to spend some time with us here during the show. Awesome. Oh, we have, we've, we've enjoyed so. it. Yeah. yeah, that's like you said, it's a great partnership and not just to mention like, the machines initially, but also the service. Yep. We have a really great relationship with the service team and the techs who help us support it. Yep. Yep. Excellent. I mean, the, the, the applications engineers that uh, that Robert E. Morris has on staff um, are they're second to none. These, these guys are incredible. Um, I can text them at any time with questions and I get responses from them um, very, very quickly. Um, nice. It's it, the service has been fantastic, and I, it's it's been a very very uh, rewarding relationship that we've had with the uh, with Akuma and, and and Robert E. Morris. That's great. I always say it's all about relationships. It's a- absolutely business is still done with people doing business with people. So absolutely. it's great to hear that. Fantastic. So thanks for the time, Wade. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, and thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks.